Hello, I'm Pastor Mark of Overbrook Presbyterian Church, and I'd like to invite you to spend the next few moments with me reflecting together on God's Word. Today, we continue in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as strangers, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who are chosen. We've already spent several days looking at this verse, and today I want us to look at the last little three-word phrase of this first verse. In this verse, Peter is still setting out who this letter is addressed to. He said to those who reside as strangers, those who are scattered, and here he says also to those who are chosen. Being chosen is a pretty powerful thing. I remember when I asked Stacy to marry me, I knew she had a choice. She could choose to reject me or she could choose me. I have always been thankful that she decided to choose me. But we can remember even as children on the playground, when you're lining up in a line and there's two captains and they're choosing people for a team. Everybody gets chosen, but there's just something still. You know you're going to be chosen because even if you're the last, like I often was, the people would finally, when you were the last, say, okay, I'll take Jernigan. But there's something powerful about being chosen. And here, Peter is not just talking about people who were chosen to be on a team on the schoolyard. He's not even talking about people who are chosen by someone else to be their spouse. He's talking about being chosen by God himself. Now, it can be easy to just gloss over those words, who are chosen. I want us to just reflect today on the beauty and the blessing that it is not just to be chosen, but to know that we are chosen by the God of creation, by the God of heaven and earth by a God who doesn't choose us because we fooled him or tricked him, because we've hidden some of our worst attributes from him. No, we're talking about a God who created us, who knows everything about us. And still knowing all those things chose us as his very own. I remember when I asked Stacy to marry me, when I was asking her to choose me, at one point she said, I don't know what to say. It's like I had caught her off guard. And I said, well, you really only have two choices. You can either say, yes, you'll marry me, or no, you won't marry me. And she said, well, why would I say no? I started by saying, well, I'm still in law school. I haven't graduated yet. I don't have a job. And then I stopped myself and I said, hey, wait a minute. I'm not going to stand here and tell you why you shouldn't marry me. You can reach that decision on your own, but I'm not going to lay out the, the reasons in front of you. And there was a part of me that really thought, hey, wait a minute, you know, if she really thinks about all of these reasons, she may choose not to choose me. The words in verse one, I think, have so much power because it indicates not only are we chosen, but we're chosen by God. We're chosen by the God of creation who knit us together 
in our mother's wombs, who knows every single reason that it would make sense not to choose us, who knows everything about us that makes us really unchoosable, and yet knowing all of those things about us, truly beholding us, still he chose us to be his very own. And in that we should find comfort and peace, and we should rejoice. Thank you for spending this time with me today, reflecting on the Word of God for the people of God.